There we go. All right. Call to order the Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021 meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, Joe, could I trouble you to take the attendance? Sure. Uh, Rich Roberts is here. Ryan Allard. Here. I'm here. Joe Hammer. Jim Hughes. George Oikel. I see him on the screen. He's on the screen. George, you're muted. He's here, but muted. Um, Tom Dean. Here. Tony Homicki. Here. Dave Edwards. Saw him earlier too on the screen. Yeah, he's here. He's just muted. Okay, Mike uh, Vieira. Nope. Mike's here. Dave Edwards is here. I'm, I didn't know his Dave Edwards is here. Mike Vieira is here. No. Oh, no. Okay, Dave Drake is here, I believe. Here, yep. And Yolanda Antoniak is not here. Okay. Rich, you want to invite our, uh, introduce our new newest member? Yeah, last but not least, in place of the word vacancy, um, we have a newly appointed alternate, and I apologize in advance for the name butchering, uh, Azim Korkatovic. Uh, if you want to unmute yourself and say it properly so that we all know what it is. <laughs> oh. That's the right way to say it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So that makes nine. Uh, everybody will participate. First item public hearing application number 2068 21Z, Tough Shed Zinc seeking a special permit in accordance with section 53A10 of the Weathersfield zoning regulations for the accessory use of outdoor merchant merchandise sales or display for more than 14 days in a calendar year for the outdoor display of sheds at 1773 Berlin Turnpike. And looks like the applicant is represented by attorney Hope. I'll turn it over to you to introduce yourself and present on behalf of the applicant. Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Megan Hope. I'm an attorney with Alter and Pearson, and I'm here tonight with Chad Butson. He's on the call as well from Tough Shed. Um, I'm going to share my screen right now. I've prepared uh, a PowerPoint. All right. Is everybody seeing that? Yep. Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. Excellent. All right. So. As uh, was mentioned in the call to the public hearing, we're requesting a special permit to allow the accessory use of um, the outdoor merchandise sales and display of six sheds. Um, the regulation requires that a, a special permit needs to be requested if that is for more than 14 days and we are requesting to have these sheds out year round. I uh, just wanted to give some information on Tough Shed. They're um, a company that was started uh, in 1981 um, out west, uh, currently headquartered in Colorado. Um, but what they do is uh, provide customized sheds and outbuildings. Um, if you have some time, I actually did it myself, but they have a really cool kind of build, build a quote system where you actually can go onto their website and totally customize your shed with different roof lines, windows, um, as you can see in this picture, to the to the bottom, you can add uh, pegboards and shelves, etc. So there's a lot of different options, uh, different siding materials, roof materials, windows, skylights, window boxes, shutters, double doors, single doors. Um, so what they do is they uh, have the customer create this customized option. It gets prefabricated at their factory in Long Island. Um, it would come to this site in, um, in those different components um, would come to the, the location here and get uh, put on a forklift onto a trailer and go to the customer's home where it would be assembled on site. Um, so each shed uh, can really be customized to what the customer is looking for. This is an aerial view of the site. If you hadn't had a chance to go out there, it is located on the west side of the Berlin Turnpike, formerly the pet supplies location. We are just north of the mobile station, which is right here, south of the Jiffy Loop in this location here. 
um, and uh, located in the regional commercial di district, this use is permitted um, and has been retail for quite some time. The site is um, 0.98 acres. This site was part of the uh, facade improvement program that the town offers. I believe they came before you a few years ago for that. Um, the facade improvements have been completed at this point, but just to refresh um, the commission's recollection, there was enhanced green space that has already been added to the site, mostly along the streetscape. So everything you're seeing highlighted in green was new um, expanded grass or landscape area that was added um, as part of the facade improvement plan. So that was almost about 4,000 square feet of additional green space and landscaping that was added. In addition, um, new LED light fixtures were put, were put up. The parking lot was repaved. I do have a picture um, that I took today actually. Uh, this was a before picture of the building and here is the after picture. So couldn't get a good picture of the landscaping and obviously because of the snow, but um, those, those improvements have been completed at this point. The building is going to be separated in two areas. There is a showroom, which will be the portion of the building that is closer to the Berlin Turnpike. And then the warehouse area is more on um, the rear portion of the building. Um, and speaking with Chad from Tough Shed this afternoon, uh, the way he described their business model was almost more like a car dealership. So inside the showroom, you're going to have three sheds um, that are more of their higher end models uh, desks for the salesperson, a sort of lounge area, so similar to your car dealership, and then they're looking for this accessory use outside of these additional sheds so that the customers can look at the different options and customize what they want um, with the, with, in the showroom with the sales representative. So this is the plan, uh, the display plan we're proposing with the six sheds. I've highlighted them in yellow. So again, Berlin Turnpike is on the right side of your screen. Um, there would be two sheds in this location closest to this new landscape island, and then we located four sheds um, in this uh, corner of the site, which you can view um, from the Berlin Turnpike. So um, right now on site with the new paved parking lot, we have 35 parking spaces. Uh, as we are showing the sheds right now, they are taking up parking spaces so that there are 23 available parking spaces, which is what is required by the zoning regulations for the uses that we have. So even with the sheds taking a parking spaces, we still meet the requirements um, of the zoning regulations. And also in speaking um, with Chad, he doesn't anticipate that there will be a parking problem. Even the 23 spaces is more than adequate for his um, employees and then customers um, who could come during the week or on the weekend. So. Um, we feel very confident that we definitely have enough parking um, for the use. And as I mentioned previously, we are looking to have these sheds out year round. Um, typically these sheds would be rotated every three years. So a different model um, would be placed um, on the site as uh, based on kind of what's selling in this area. Um, I do have, again, that rendering to sort of show um, the groups of two, six total sheds that we're proposing. Um, for the site. Uh, they are anticipating opening this location in mid-March um, and they would have a manager and a salesperson located on the site and then they would have uh, two to three um, crews of people who would be uh, picking up the sheds and going on site to assemble, assemble them. Uh, typical hours would be nine to six and um, Yes, I think that I think I've covered everything that I was looking to mention. So we're happy to answer any questions. And as I mentioned, uh, Chad from Tough Shed is on the call as well. If you have specific questions for him as well. Okay. Uh, hi, this is, this is a hey, Rich. This is David Drake. I asked a question. Sure. Uh, what are you going to have? Are you going to have big trucks and a couple cranes type of thing, or what do you? How do you move these things? when someone buys one or is it delivered directly? Did you, did you say it was del delivered directly? Yeah, so so these sheds, um, the way, uh, these sheds are gonna be placed here. So nobody would be buying these these six, six sheds. Um, when somebody buys a shed, it would be customized for them. It's made at the factory in Long Island and then it comes all in parts, um, like all sort of stacked. 
Um, and so they um, are actually able, they don't need any crane or anything like that to move it around. It just gets moved by a forklift, put onto a trailer, um, and then the trailer would take it out of the parking lot to the site. Okay. I have a Anyone question. Have? Yep. Question or two, Mr. Chairman George. Sure. Um, let's see. In the in the material here, it's uh, why why are you putting one of these in the twenty five foot front yard? Yeah. So I, I talked about that with Chad um, from Tough Shed earlier today, and right now we're showing. Um, we're showing, oh, Peter, do I need to admit, Michael? It's coming up on, on my, oh, you got it, okay. So yes, right now we're showing two sheds in this location here. I'm circling them with my mouse, sort of located um, side to side, if you will. So, and the 25 line is right here. So we're just kind of clipping it with this end. What we actually can do um, is rotate those sheds because if you look at the rendering, what, what we've, Pete placed here is actually two sheds that are longer front to back than they are side to side. So um, we are, oh, sorry, we are amenable to actually rotating these, these sheds the other direction so that they would be more in line with kind of the shape of the parking space. And that way I could get, um, I could get the shed out of that setback line. So we're amenable to, you know, a condition of approval that requires that we don't have a shed over the, the, the front yard setback uh megan no i'm i'm more concerned oh. with i appreciate your presentation on this but uh does the town or the regulations or dot have any concerns with these setbacks or lack of this or this being in the setback peter maybe you could ask answer that uh, yes george it was in one it was in my staff memo to uh, point that out to you and i believe if the applicant is willing to uh, alter the location um, to meet this setback, that's that's fine. And that's a, that should be a condition maybe of any approval, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, other, the uh, lighting, lighting on the site, I guess. Uh, do they, are they getting enough lighting in uh, has, has that been evaluated, Peter? So I believe um, when we reviewed the facade application, there were wall pack lights. Uh, I have not observed them since um, uh, as the project is nearing completion, but um, certainly if you want us to, to look at that, I, I'd probably defer to the applicant in terms of how much. No, that's, that's fine. If you think, if you generally think it's all right, Peter, and if she can say something to that effect, we'd appreciate it. Yes, I do believe as part of the facade uh, enhancement program that new LED lights were placed along the building. And when I went to the site today, I did see that they were installed. They obviously weren't on because it wasn't nighttime. And there is a light pole also that's been installed in this back corner, uh, which I believe provides adequate light for this sort of rear area back here. So I do think there's adequate site lighting. Okay. Speaking of lighting, is there any uh, electrical or anything hookups to the sheds themselves so. or um, like during during the winter months, do they just, you're not allowed to go into the sheds past like 4.30 or whatever? I'm just curious if there's any lighting going on inside there. Yeah, Chad, is that something that you could answer? Yes, sorry. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you, Chad. Yeah, could, okay, could great, you just yeah. identify yourself for the record, please? Chad, you're back on mute, I think. Yeah, I scared him. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that, guys. Chad Butson, uh, Vice President of Operations for Tufts Shed in the Northeast. Okay. So, so yeah, um, typically we we will not have any electrical in these sheds and um, we will not bring customers out to them after dark. Um, it's a really short window in which we would be open in the winter. Our months are shorter. 
you know, hours are shorter than in the summer. In the summer, we tend to be open till six. Uh, in the winter, till five. Um, so we wouldn't have any worries about that. That's the, the, the main reason we have those displays inside. It extends the showroom and the selling season into the into those winter months. So no electric should... would be answered by Okay, uh, and ju and just one more follow up. the The sheds are they they're at ground level? They're or are they correct? Are they are they on blocks or anything? Just curious about the drainage. No, we we um. So we in a customer's yard, we'll put them on blocks, but when we display them, uh, we use steel joists so that we can put them right on the ground. Okay. And the shed, the sheds will be uh, locked down at night. And will the other question is, will they be used for storage at all? Not used for storage at all. Yeah. And yes, they will be locked at night. Okay. okay. Anyone else? George has a yes, question. Sir. Another one, last one here, I guess. Um, sure. The facade improvement program, maybe it goes to Peter more than Megan, but the facade improvement program paid for part of this site when was it a previous owner or in what what items so did they redo the building did they repave uh, i i'd like an explanation generally of what happened and uh was this under the facade improvement program so george um, yeah maybe maybe sure. megan can show the before and after again just so that you can see clearly what it is that's different. So you can see from the before, yeah. the condition of the parking lot, um, it was almost, uh, it almost required mowing. So, uh, so they, they re reconstructed the parking lot, obviously, and you can see the facade of the building uh, was um, redone as well. The, the EDIC uh, paid for the exterior improvements to the building, um, to the lighting, I the EDIC? Yeah, the facade improvement program is through. They the, run it, the they, yes, facade they, program? They, oh, they, okay, correct. I'm sorry, thank you. Yep, that's correct. Uh, also, uh, they were required to uh, be reviewed by the design review committee as well before the funding was allocated for the project. So the property um, changed hands um, as part of the facade. Uh, so the present owner is uh, Joe Sulo. He bought the property from the previous owners and um, financed um, the renovation to the building and to the site. Um, so we paid for landscaping, uh, exterior uh, building improvements. He did. Oh, uh, no, the EDIC program. The EDIC. Okay. okay. For, it was Thank partial. You. So the, uh, the the requirement is at least a 50-50 match from the from the property owner. It's a 50-50 match. Okay. Thank you. Sure. It's just I was talking to somebody, Peter, today and uh, about using the program, and I, that's part of my reason for going through this. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? I have a quick mm -hmm. question, uh, Rich. Um, there won't be any sure. assemblage here in the warehouse, Attorney Hope? Sorry, could you repeat that? Will they be assembling any of the buildings in the warehouse section? What's the warehouse section going to be used for? Chad, could you answer that question, please? Yeah, there's no assembly on site at all. It's just storage of the prefabricated kits. So um, like the metal joists that I talked about for the floor, um, the roofing panels, which are pre-cut and, and the walls that are pre-assembled, those are just stored inside that warehouse. I didn't see any overhead doors, so I assume there that, that made sense. How many employees do you expect to have? Two to three. Two to three. Initially, it'll be two. As we expand, we'll add a second salesperson. Is the loading in the back? Yeah, it's back back here, and I believe I believe there is an overhead door in the back yeah. uh, by yeah. this concrete ramp here. Yes, there's an 18 foot overhead door. I think I've got a question. Um, yeah. Attorney Hope, do you have a actual photo that shows 
your client's property as well as the property at 1761 Berlin Turnpike. I'm just curious. Because one of your photos showed vegetation. Was that down at yeah, the Yeah, let me maybe? see um, what I have. Maybe that before and after picture, did that show it? Are you talking about kind of over in this location? Well, actually where the sheds are gonna be, go, if you could go back, oh. you had a different one on here um, as well, just uh, prior. Is there another photo? I, yeah. Uh, there we go. The Google, there we go. Okay. This one? Yeah. This, yeah, this Google picture I didn't pan over. Let me so see. What's the, what's the use to the, to the north? The use to the north, I believe, is the um, Jiffy Lube. And I do know uh, Chad mentioned to me that he did speak with both abutting property owners and that they were um, excited about um, the, uh, the new use. And is there a little bit of landscaping that your arrow is on right now between the two? So there is, there is this whole green area, which is not our property, is um, an open space sort of conservation uh, area that's associated with this development here. It's accessed right here. Um, yep. There is like a wetlands right off um, the west of our property. But I believe between the two properties, there is, I'm trying to find it right here. Um, there is, so there's the a crossings, I think. all in the back here. Okay. Back, back here. Um, between the two properties, I believe when I was on site today, I did see a, like a, some type of hedgerow here, like a arborvitaes, um, but I don't yep. see them on the plan. I think they're on the, on the next property. Okay, so yeah, I was just basically trying to, in part, I was just trying to figure out if rotating the two sheds closer to the street, you know, which makes more sense to have them the way you have them or the other way. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. You're welcome. All right, anyone else have questions? I have a comment, Mr. Chairman. Just that guide rail is very nice looking uh, that was put in and, and kind of unique. Uh, and some, uh, I haven't seen that in any of our properties that we've approved in town or looked at. Mr. Chairman, it's me, Hazim. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, would you guys be able to talk about how big the trucks are and are they going to be? loaded in the morning or during nine to six all you know during the business hours when customers are there yeah chad do you think that that's a good question chad could you kind of explain um when the different components get delivered and then how they uh i guess how they go out during the day yeah every the the trucks are unloaded in the morning and um, the and the trailers are loaded in the morning as well. So we try to we we always time those to be together. So the the you know um, what you know as far as the staffing wise, it's just a lot easier to have the trucks a truck arrive and then and what we typically have is just a twenty five hundred uh, or a flatbed thirty five hundred truck that these are loaded onto and then brought to the customer site. If you think about it, it's a small vehicle that has to be able to get into the driveways of the customers. So that they're not, the 2,500 and 3,500 vehicles is what we're loading. Thank you. And all of that will take place behind the building rather than out that's in the correct. parking area? That's correct. That's exactly why we established the, the door in the back. Yeah, okay. So just to clarify, it's just in the morning. It won't be throughout the whole day when customers are there, correct? That, that's correct. There may be a rare occasion where we'd have something, they'd come back for a piece of material, but the load up happens in the morning. Um, we require the guys to try to be a, a, out to their first site by 8 a.m. Yeah, thank you. Will okay. contractors come to pick up, pick up the sheds or do you deliver all the sheds to the site and then the contractors do their fabrication there or do you fabricate them? There, there will be some contractors picking up there, yes. Uh, we, we have an accrediting process, so we, we badge them through the Home Depot. Um, they have to pass a background check in order to be in the customer's backyard. So there, there's a pretty rigorous process to vet these folks that, uh, that work for us. Yeah. I was more worried more about the traffic on the site than the 
customers, but that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have questions? Yeah, I guess my, my only comment is uh, like George, I, I would personally prefer to see the shed out of the, uh, you know, the front yard setback, um, you know, not because it's a structure that's built there. I mean, it's inventory, it's not a structure, but I, you know, I would just not want to set precedent of having things within the, you know, the front yard setback unnecessarily if you can turn them so that uh, you don't lose parking spaces and you can get it out of there. It probably will look less crowded to the people driving by. Yeah, we're, we're definitely open to that as a condition of approval to if you want to word it that we either can't have anything in the front yard setback or that we rotate the sheds so they're not in the front yard. I think we can we have enough width there to make it work with three parking spaces instead of the four that we're showing right now. So we can definitely do that. Yeah, there's that. And then there's like sight line issues potentially for pulling out of the parking lot. So I think um, having that as a um, Having that, having that as a stipulation, I think, is important. Okay. All right. Anyone else have any questions for the applicant? Uh, no questions, um, Mr. Chairman. But I would uh, uh, echo the uh, uh, the concerns that uh, that you raised uh, uh, that are covered in the. Uh, uh, in the statement uh, in the staff report uh, with regards to those uh, uh, two sheds that are uh, you know in uh, in that f in the front portion of the the, uh, the parking lot that has the the two sheds that uh, uh, are creating the the, the difficulty um, so I, I would uh, endorse a condition as it relates to that okay Thank you. Is there anyone from the public? Can't tell with limited number of boxes that I can look at here. Is there anybody, Peter? Oh, I'm checking. I don't see anyone. I don't see anyone. I don't uh, recognize her. Okay. Good. All right. Um, any last questions for the applicant before we close the hearing? If not, someone want to make a motion to close the hearing? Motion so made by George to close the hearing. Thank you. All right. Is there a second? Second, David Drake. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, okay. hearing is closed. Um, now on to the deliberations. Does someone want to make a motion to start the discussion? I'll make a motion to approve based on the presentation and the uh, keeping the setback open as per discussion. Okay. So Second. no, out, none of the sheds within the front yard setback. Okay, Correct. George seconded that. Uh, um, Tom, what was your issue? Our condition, is that included in what we just? Line of sight he was talking about. He was? And I think he was talking about line of sight, right? Is that yeah, something I, I think everyone was addition, talking about Tom? the front I think everyone was talking about the front yard setback. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's the yeah. issue's been covered. Okay. Yep. Yes. All right. Is there anything else, Peter? Did we miss anything? No, I think you you discussed a couple of other issues, but I don't think any rose to the level of needing a condition. So I think uh, as long as the uh, storage sheds are realigned or moved um, farther back to be out of the 25 foot front yard setback, you should be good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else have anything they want to say before we vote? If not, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 
Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Thanks very much. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Thanks very much. Hey, Megan, if you could just uh, you. close yep. up your present, that would be great. Thank you. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Have a good night. You Take care. Two, good night. All right, that was all the old business. We have no new business. Next item is minutes of the January 20th, 2021 meeting. Make a motion, so make a motion. To Earl, if you want. Second. Yeah, I do. Thank you. He does. Is there a second? A second that. <laughs> okay. Motion by George, seconded by Mike Vieira. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Staff reports? Uh, before you move off of the minutes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just um, want to take a minute to let you know that we will be, this will be Julie's last meeting preparing minutes for us. We uh, interviewed last week for um, some board uh, recording secretaries, and I think we've we found um, some people. So. Uh, Julie has agreed for the last few meetings to hang in there while we searched for her replacement. But I just want to let you know that uh, this will be Julie's last uh, meeting and uh, she will be uh, set free from her obligations to the <laughs> West Planning and Zoning Commission. So I just wanted to thank uh, Julie uh, for her time and for helping us out for all this uh, period and sticking through the uh, COVID as well. I'd also like to agree with you. Uh, Peter, and uh, thank her for her services. Uh, this sounds like a dip, an easy job, but it isn't with minutes. And uh, so I, uh, I, I've done them in my career and uh, I, I didn't enjoy it sometimes. And uh, so I appreciate what <laughs> she's done and uh, we want to wish her the best. Thank you guys, yeah. I really appreciate that. And I've appreciated working with you. And I do, I did enjoy doing them. No, you're too polite. Yeah, you're no, you're being way, way too polite. polite. <laughs> and then George said something about trees. <laughs> and then he went on. No, I wish, you I wish you all the best. Hey guys, one of my best friends up the street here, one of my neighbors, who I say hi to all the time and talk to, uh, was a former. Uh, did this kind of work for the commission for quite a long yeah. while, Ellen. So. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. They're good. They're good people that do this work. I yeah, I mean, it, 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 Mr. Chairman, about George not correcting the minutes in the last year or two. So I hope uh, whoever replaces Julie does just as good a job, George, because you are a nitpicker. So we know that you can. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm stopped <laughs> reading them or something. No, no, no. We, we definitely Thanks, had George. a good streak going. So, yeah. Uh, uh, no, the. The, the work has been excellent and greatly appreciated. We you. wish you all the best as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Peter, do you have any staff report? Uh, I just want, as I said, just wanted to mention Julie's last meeting. The only other thing is just to bring to your attention if, if you're, uh, you're interested, there's a, I think we've talked about this at a, at a previous meeting, but there's a, uh, initiative called the Desegregate Connecticut. Um, their mission is to uh, uh, try and open up uh, some zoning uh, regulations in different communities for, uh, for affordable housing opportunities. But one of the things that they just recently released was what they, and if you wanted to look at it, you could find it on their website, which is desegregatect.org um, slash Atlas. So they went out it's, it's a very uh, broad undertaking. They went out to every community and they uh, mapped all of the zoning uh, districts uh, and analyzed all of the uh, regulations and have come up with a, uh, almost a GIS type system where um, 
it tells you what your community allows in terms of, you know, single family, two family, three family, four family, um, accessory apartments, um, what area of town, what the percentage is, those kinds of things. So they have gone through this exercise and just recently, I think last week, released this um, this product. So if uh, you're interested, you can zoom into each town, you can compare towns. It's kind of an interesting uh, tool that's now uh, available and I'm assuming they're going to add to it over time, but um, it was quite an effort, uh, kind of a first time thing and it's an interesting uh, tool to use. Um, so if, you're, if you're interested in taking a look at that, please do. We just wanted to bring that to your attention. Is there right away information yeah. on there? What was that? Is there right away information on that? Like No, it's just zoning boundaries. I mean, some towns, the way they draw their zoning boundaries exclude roads and things like rights away, but um, most towns just exclude uh, that. And so it's just really the zoning and they break it down by percentage of your town and acreage and it, it's kind of interesting perspective to look at um yeah so peter what's the site again that you refer to desegregatect.org um I'm, I'm always confused about the front slash or the back slash but slash atlas wasn't there a big article in the Hartford Current a week ago on that? I think. Yeah, they're getting a lot of press, a lot of social media yeah. coverage. It's uh, an effort being uh, headed up by Sarah Bronin from Hartford, UConn law, yeah. law professor, and a, a team of other people. So they've, they've been at, they're looking to uh, potentially uh, have some legislative changes at the state level as it relates to some of these topics. We'll see how uh, that goes, but they've... Um, been at this for a little while. This is a big product that they've released. And it's kind of interesting um, to take a look at different communities, how they handle uh, these types of housing opportunities and where they are in their communities and, and that kind of thing. So, um, but anyway, just wanted to uh, bring it to your attention, check it out if you have some time. Um, and you can look at Weathersfield as well while you're at it. Peter, this is the same group yeah, I mean, that- uh... and it is, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say it is more accurate than some of their earlier iterations, too, <laughs> at least with respect to Weathersfield. Yeah, they did reach out to us. Um, so we had to um, have them make some corrections to some of the assumptions that they made. So um, we spent some time working with them. I'm, I, I'm going to go into it in a little more detail and, and see if they got everything, everything correct. But on first blush, it looks like they did a pretty decent job. Um, but you can click on different features, you know, different zoning districts and that kind of thing and get a sense um, of, of how each community has done. So, um, you know, it's a, it was quite an effort to do. So, and Glad to hear that, Peter, because as I've said many, a couple of times already at commission meetings that they did a poor job when I was with the Department of Housing back 20 years ago and they thought they treated us unfairly to some degree. So I... I'd like to uh, maybe even eventually when you get into this, when you, I know you're going to have to do it, you've got to do some uh, housing study uh, that, uh, you know, you break down the, uh, the amount of housing in the various zones in town, the percentages and stuff like that. Right. And uh, I appreciate uh, hearing more of that or some kind of summary, but I don't want you to get into it at all tonight or, or maybe wait until you get into the actual study. I don't yeah. It's going to be a good tool uh, for us as, as we do, you know, our, our housing study, um, and we could probably add information to it, which would be even more helpful. Good. All right. Next item is public comments, and there is no public uh, referral from the town of Rocky Hill. Special permit application for a Jersey Mike's at the former dress barn at 38 Town Line Road. So just uh, with the menu on here and everything. Yeah, they. Um, so if you like, uh, if you like sub sandwiches, I don't know if they're called subs down in New Jersey, but uh, it's more of a New England thing. But um, just uh, they sent it to us, so I wanted to just add it to the agenda in case anyone had any particular comments or um, concerns. So um, it's available just for your information in case you had anything to say. So it's right in that shopping center at the bottom of uh, uh, Town Line Road. 
uh, as Rich said, in the uh, former dress barn space. Sad Not to see the dress barn go. There you go. Well, I'll leave that. <laughs> I'll leave that alone in the comments. <laughs> Not that uh, I, I don't else. think the parking is a problem, Don Andrew. You, Peter? No, I, I don't have no. any. Have any uh, it's pretty wide open, even with the car operations in the back area there. Yes. Uh, I don't see that as an issue. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, wooden that's tap my, fills it my up pretty well. Yeah, you know, wooden tap fills it up pretty well, usually afternoon and evening, but the rest of the time, you know, there's more than enough space there. Yeah, they have a car, a tire place at the end, and it, at, in the evening that place that empties. So I, I'm, I don't have any concerns about parking there. So, okay, good to hear. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and it, no real effect on us. Right. All right. No pending applications listed. Do you anticipate anything for the next meeting, or do we get a vacation? <clears throat> no, I was. Uh, but, uh, when the day started today, I thought we could um, cancel, but uh, as the day progressed, we have uh, uh, two things. Um, uh, we have one application, uh, and then we have a probably a pre-application. So it'll be a light agenda, but nevertheless, unfortunately, we will we will um, not be able to. You won't be able to have the night off. Sorry. Okay. No, that's all right. Yeah, it was kind of nice tonight to talk about sheds without a, having to ask whether people were going to live in them or, you know, any plumbing and that sort of thing. So. Okay. The next meeting is right. on, next meeting is on a Wednesday. So just make a note in your calendar. I think it's one of those holiday Mondays. So you get pushed to Wednesday. So it's Wednesday the 17th versus Tuesday the 16th. Okay, good to know. All right. Does anyone else have anything they want to uh, discuss before we adjourn? Is there any reason why Hazine hasn't sung a song for us? The new members have to sing a song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, 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 yeah, George here. Uh, CFPZA going to hold their annual meeting or not? What's, what's going on there? Anything? <laughs> It's usually in March, if I'm not. Yeah, I know. So have yeah, you heard I, anything about? I haven't heard yet. You know, it's, happening. it's probably not looking. Yeah, you, not looking good. I no, I think I they, they could have that ten people. Good. Right. Unless they did it virtually. Yeah, everyone gets their own ZD and sits around a desktop and uh, <laughs> watches the presentation. What are they going to do about the bar? Gotta have ZD. You're on your own, George. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll come by your house with something. Okay. All right. Yeah, Anything if, else? I did. Um, get, if, I did get some takers for the um, the Wesleyan training that's coming up. I think Tom uh, expressed an interest in that. So, um, and I think we did get a couple of ZBA members who are interested in that. Uh, training. So um, if you are interested, let me know. And I uh, will register register you in the in the town will cover Hazim. It's a training session that's coming up. It's offered every year, it gives you an overview of planning and zoning and ZBA uh, laws and things like that. So if you are interested, um, send me an email, I can send you the information. And you can decide if it's something you want to you want to participate in. It's a virtual training session so um so it's always it's always it's several people have gone in the past it's always it's a helpful series of sessions sounds good thank you i will definitely reach out okay yeah it's uh saturday march 6th and uh, i'm sure some of the people presenting have finished their powerpoints and some of them haven't <laughs> are you in it uh, are you yeah, he's, he's presenting yeah Also, uh, All right. um, I know I may have missed the roll, um, but for the record, I am here. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, we sorry. We got you in. Yeah, we're we're sorry you're here too, Mike. <laughs> Same. Good.
<laughs> record, time, record timing, everybody. Good work. All right. Anything else? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right. Motion by Ryan, second by Tony. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Take care. Have a good evening. Rest up good for night, the everyone. next snowstorm. All right. Good Thanks, night. everybody. And thank you, Julie. Good night. Thank you, Julie. Yes. Thanks, Julie. Good night. Take care.